Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of Mono E Mono, a show where Joe and I like to pit two superheroes or supervillains against one another to see who's more dominant. Joe, are you excited about tonight's matchup? I'm stinking pumped, laddie. Well, Joe, I think uh, you take the honors and maybe introduce the combatants themselves. Ho, 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 It would be my honor, sir. <clears throat> In the blue corner, we've got a sopping wet, 160-pound blue teleporting creature. Five nine Nightcrawler. In the red corner, we have a meaty 167-pound foe at a staggering height of five foot ten inches. It's your favorite neighborhood web slinger. It's Spider-Man. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, well, there you go. There are combatants for this evening. So basically, if you watch the show at one of our podcasts before, you know we like to put them in this thing called the pit, which is basically if you took like the bottom part of the Coliseum out, you just put a steel dome over the top of it, a few rocks out there, and we, you know, we have them fight to the death. Now, these combatants come in with the things they would normally have on them. So my best case um, scenario or example of something like that is like if Batman were to fight Superman, he might have some kryptonite on him, but he wouldn't come in with a full kryptonite armor thing. So we've got Spider-Man coming in, you know, with his web shooters and his costume. Nightcrawler's coming in with his costume, but he also will come in with two swords because he is a pretty well-known fencer. Now, Joe, this fight, I think at the very least, is going to be flashy. We've got a lot of abilities between the two of them. Uh, you know, we look at Nightcrawler here, who's people know him mostly for teleportation. But like I said, he's a pretty good fencer. He's pretty agile. He can do a few things. He's a pretty tricky fighter. Spider-Man has a lot of abilities. He's very, very tough to beat. But initially, Joe, do, do you have a do you have a, a kind of a, a feeling about who you think is going to win this one? The major. So we're starting out with a block of chatter here. Block, a block of. <laughs> Starting out with a block of Chieta. Yes, of course. By Watch. the end of this thing, we might turn it into one of the Swiss cheese. I'm gonna put some holes in it, so. I was like, where are you going with that? All right, yeah, sure. First, first thing I'm thinking, that's gonna really play in the Spider-Man's favor, Spidey Sense. Night it is Crawler's powerful. Nightcrawler's biggest, his, his biggest, uh, the card up his sleeve, so to speak, is the element of surprise. Yes, very true. Oh, I'm here, but now I'm over here. Oh, and now I'm there. Where Where am I? No, you don't even know where I'm at. Yeah, well, Spider-Man's got spider sense. Before he's even finished teleporting, Spidey knows it's over. Uh, there's one thing, though, I want to say about that, is that, you know, if Nightcrawler gets his hands on Spider-Man, one of Nightcrawler's, like, things he will do to exhaust a foe is teleport with them a ton because that exhausts like his his enemies, his adversaries. So that's a, a tactic he's used in the past. Also, I should say he can't. We're not going to let him teleport out of the arena. It's going to be one of those things where he can't get out. So if you're going to sure. say Jimmy yeah. just teleports away, like it's like no, he's he's stuck. Uh, yeah, and it's not like Nightcrawler's going to teleport him to the outer atmosphere and just let him go and then teleport back to the ground and watch him fall. Uh, yeah. You know, even if Spidey could probably, you know, find something to latch onto with his web and sling away. Yeah, potentially. Unless um, it's like a big open field, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, one thing I was thinking, though, Joe, about this fight is it might be a little kind of like fighting a lesser version of Dr. Octavius for Spider-Man. Because Nightcrawler is going to use his tail, and he can use that to wield a sword. So if he approaches Spider-Man, he's not trying to surprise him, and he just rushes up to him, you know, two swords, and then his tail kind of comes up and grabs a sword, and then he's kind of trying to punch him, slice him, slice him with his tail. He might get a few good hits. Like, he might be cutting Spidey up a little bit. Spidey sense, you know, is working, but that doesn't always, you know, pay off. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I don't think his Spidey sense would be as big of a deal as I made it out to be, because when you think about it, it kind of works more as, like, a can counteract it like he's quiet enough or sneaky enough uh, or elusive enough to, to not set it off so I think it does have to be a physical doesn't it to, to trigger that 
uh, potentially. I don't know if they're like if it's like an energy thing or whatever. I think it's just an immediate sense of danger, and it's just kind of like, hey man, you gotta you gotta move, and it's like, oh okay, like I got yeah, I got that. Yeah. You know, uh, you know. So I don't know. It it might work against his teleportation, but even if uh, you know he's gonna teleport, and the second that there's a physical presence there, he's gonna know and be able to you know do something. Um, but I just wonder what what kind of. Uh, you know, immediately you start to think, okay, Spider-Man's going to be have to have to be the the smart one here and be uh, defensive initially, right? Uh, so, yeah. What, what's the first move that he busts out, Jimmy? Is he going to do some sort of? Uh, is he going to limit the playing field by you know? I, I guess I've talked about this in the past. We did a little bit of one v one in a podcast, and I said, oh, Venom's just going to you know sling webs everywhere and create an, an almost immobile situation. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, would Spider-Man go for something like that? You know, if Nightcrawler's teleporting around, limit his movement or access to Spider-Man? Yeah, that might be true. And, you know, both combatants, especially in this world, would know of each other's powers. So I think saying and saying that is not necessarily a bad idea. So he could be kind of sending, you know, a bunch of webs out trying to not even just slow him down, but just to get a feel for where he is. So that way, if it's like, oh, he teleport, I know he's like that, like over there. So maybe he would try that. The other thing is, too, about Nightcrawler, and I know we talked about, uh, you know, exhausting your foe, but Spider-Man has got really, really high stamina, and he's a physical threat. And Nightcrawler, unfortunately, as, as, you know, quick as he can be with the teleportation, he is still susceptible to these punches. You know, it's been said that Spider-Man holds back on a lot of his attacks, and it's like, if he were to get one solid hit on Nightcrawler... I think that's how it ends. But you're right. I think he starts off with something maybe more defensively because he knows Nightcrawler is going to come maybe from behind or from the side or something like that. But even if, you know, he takes a hit, takes a stab even, you know, grabs him and kind of just right there. Like, yeah, that might be the fight. Because they, they talk about Spider-Man being able to counteract the effects of, like, 10 tons. Yeah, he's he's very strong. And, and unfortunately, Nightcrawler is not... He might be... I think he's a little stronger than your average man. But besides that, I don't think... Yeah. I don't know. I think I do think though, Joe, the very first, you know, I think he, he might swing in depending on how far away they are from each other. He might try to swing in, close the distance, and Nightcrawler might meet him in the air. So kind of like this cool picture we have that we're showing off here today. I think that might be the very first thing you see. These two guys kind of grapple and just go for the, the hits and the sword and all this stuff, and it's like, okay, like yeah, here we go. But I don't yeah, think it's prolonged. Are we, are we talking Spider Man homecoming abilities or like the more uh, standard Spider-Man. Are we talking like you have every web slinging uh, ability in the you know the codex, so to speak? No, I'd say that what we're gonna do here is we're gonna try to do our best to do like the prime version of them, and just like the best version of just they themselves. If he were to have gotten like the Iron Spider or something before this fight, if we were you know going in with that, I'd say yeah, he's got access to all those things, but. Because he doesn't, I, I'm not gonna say that he's got all those like the taser webs and all these special other abilities on top of that. Because I think he already has the edge coming into this fight, and Nightcrawler would need something. He, you have to give him something really nice to kind of even that out. But yeah, I, I don't think this fight goes on for super long. I think it's stylish. I think it's flashy. I think it's cool aerial combat. I think you know, if they get close, if Nightcrawler is able to dodge out of the way of the punches, it could go on for a bit. Because neither person's probably going to try to kill each other, even though we told them they had to. But I think eventually, <laughs> Spider-Man gets one. He gets, you know, grabs the tail, grabs another hand, and just like, kind of headbutts him or something. Like it's Knocks just. Him out in some fast. Yeah, I don't know. What do you think, Joe? What do you do? You think that would go down the same way? Now, see if I'm Spider-Man, I'm going to think, okay, what are my own abilities? Art, and he's got swords. I have. I have a bit of a advantage if I keep him at a medium to long range distance, right? Um, oh, maybe like web bullets or something. Web bullets, or first thing I'm going to attack are his swords. Yeah, if I, I can isolate his swords and web them to the wall, it's uh, over. Yeah, and it's, if he tries to go for him, he can't get him away. He's like trying to pull him off the wall. Exactly, yeah, go ahead and try and get those swords because next thing you know, you're going to be freaking splatted to the wall with my fist. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Yeah, that's the first thing. I'm going to take his swords away from him, and then uh, he can't handle the webs. And I suppose he could teleport out of, like, webs if he wanted, or would the webs go with him if they're, like, attached to him? Uh, they probably get cut off, depending on how far they are. I don't know if he, like, tries to... If he gets hit with them, I'm not sure if that might get just cut off when he goes into... Um, 
to the other dimension and then pops back out somewhere else. He might yeah, solve some so, webbing so on like him. Like but... say he's raveled up in a in a web. A spider would ravel him up, you know. Say he's in that, and then he teleports. If that's like connected to him, like part of him, and is he gonna go with it, or can yes. he just go out of it and it just coils up? No, I believe it goes with him. I think it's whatever he's wearing or is attached to him comes with him too. Yeah. So. So yeah, all he does, all Spider-Man really needs to do is get one good lick in there, or, or you know, shot and uh, and web him up as quick as he can. I mean, if he's got enough ability to just like doo -doo 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 -doo, anytime he teleports, he's just trying to knock him out with like a, a, a spider a web ball or whatever. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it could go on for a while because Nightcrawler's quick. You know, he's going to be able to move around really quickly uh, sure, via the sure. teleportation. So it might go on for a while, but the second Spider-Man gets a good hit, it, it, it seems to me it would be uh, he's caught and he's done. Yeah, I think that's a I think that's a good point though you make about the swords. I think that's how the fight starts. He kind of goes cross with his hands. Spidey pulls them both over. He's like, "Oh, do you have a license for these? Like these are kind of sharp and dangerous." Then he kind of webs them against the wall. And Nightcrawler's like, "Oh no, my friend!" And it's just you know, they start punching. It's like, "Ah, oh, dang it!" Yeah, you take that away for sure. That's a good point, man, because you you take that that offensive that slight offensive edge away from uh, Nightcrawler. I think I, I really think. It, it's hard to not say Spider-Man. I think here, it's just he's yeah. got so many things, man. He's well, what he's about tough. this? Spider-Man gets the swords and he stabs them into the ground all the way up to the hilt. Can Nightcrawler get him out? No. Yeah, or I was gonna say. He, or can he grab it and teleport away with it out of the ground? Uh, I don't know. And I honestly, I don't think that's Spidey's style. He wouldn't stab him into the ground. He'd web those things up on the cage wall or on the cage or the wall or whatever else. He'd web right them up somewhere. At the top, right up yeah. at the top. Doom. And he just be like, yeah. there you go. You're like, oh. You're like, ah, oh, damn. Yeah, and then if I'm Spidey, I'm going to do something to, like, uh, you know, if I want this to end a little quick, a little more quickly and be a little bit more proactive about it, I would probably uh, start creating some uh, obstacles for him. You sure, web, yeah. He, you've taken his swords away. You've got the web ability. Freaking web that place up so thick that every time he teleports, he's getting caught in something. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's probably a good. Because I was thinking, like, what if you like got a leg and like tied it down, and then he tried to teleport away from that? If that, like, I guess that would probably cut the binds there. So maybe you do a bunch of that until you get him. You just basically wrap him up, like you said, and then he, if he tries to teleport, just like a cocoon, like teleporting around, he's like, dunk, and he's like, poof, and then dunk over there. And you're like, dude, he can't just stop. He's like, dunk, 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 dunk. You're like, <laughs> yep. <laughs> you're like, I'm sorry. No. Yeah. So I think, I think we're in agreement here. I think Spidey takes this one, but still a really cool looking fight. And really yeah. fun to think about. Like we said, I don't think it'd be quick, and I don't think it'd be easy for Spider-Man. I think it's all dependent on whether he gets the swords away from him. Because if Nightcrawler is able to close gaps and, and teleport around him and, and get any good slices in there, Spidey could be done. I mean, it technically could go either way, depending on how smart Spider-Man is. If he thinks like us and he goes for those swords, which I mean, who wouldn't? I mean, yeah, you'd, you'd yeah, have to, I feel pretty dense. Enough. The only reason I say it, I think it could be quick is if Spidey gets just like that one hit. And I think that's true on a lot of Spider-Man villains. He usually holds back, but if he was told not to hold back and he was like, okay, I really can't this time. If he gets, he might just, you know, liquefy Nightcrawler's face. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you're like, mm. you're like, yeah, true. <laughs> I would love to see it come down to like, you know, Nightcrawler stabs him like with both swords and Spidey's just like, I can take that hit, like breaks the swords and then just like grabs him by the throat. And, like, <laughs> and like, oh yeah. god. The Venom suit starts peering out, like the black suit starts showing up and he's just like, ah, no. He doesn't have the yes. Venom suit. He yes. doesn't have the Venom suit. It'd be too yeah. overpowered. Uh, we were going to start a whole nother show. <laughs> That's the, yeah, the next week or the next month. It'll just be like, hey, what if he had the Venom suit? What if Nightcrawler had the Venom suit? No. Uh, oh, yeah. What fun! <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. No. Um, <laughs> well, cool. Teleporting Venom? Yikes. Oh. Um, anyway, there you go. That's the very first episode of Mono E Mono. If you have any suggestions for any combatants, just please uh, put them down in the comments down below. And then I will get a bunch of those and we'll put them on patreon.com slash critical reviews. And that's where people, the patrons, will vote to see who fights to the death next. So thank you so much, Joe. Thanks for tuning in, and remember to adapt and overcome. <laughs>